So I've been a Windows user for the last 15 years and I've always resisted the forces telling me to go uh, to the Apple ecosystem until recently and um, I decided to shift and experience uh, the Mac OS world and here with me today I'll be looking at my first Mac laptop and this is the M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch. Uh, what I like about it um, what I think it's not so great and what will be my recommendations going forward. So as a user, I need my laptops to generally do three things. One, productivity, that is my emails, my notes, my documents, uh, browsing, watching videos. A uh, second is that I use uh, my laptop uh, for programming where I do web, web development, I do machine learning, and I still use the same laptops for video processing for tutorials that I put out to the channel. And the third thing is that outside my YouTube world and my personal life, I also have work in which I fly drones for a living. So I process very high resolution videos and I also process a lot of gigabits and gigabits of aerial data at a time. So I needed my laptops to solve these three and that's where primarily I've been using Windows so uh, previously before I had a ThinkPad uh, I'm all, I also have this Core i9 uh, RTX 3060 uh, gaming laptop that is phenomenal uh, I have also used before an Alienware and also a HP Spectre and also a Dell XPS 15 so in this video I'll be comparing how this Apple Mac Pro uh, M1 40 inch compares to all the laptops that I've used before and, and where it shines and where really uh, maybe I think it lags behind. So let's get to it. So first things first, build quality. So I think of all laptops I've ever used in my life when it comes to build quality and finishing, this M1 Mac Pro is the best hands down laptop that I've ever used. I mean just the details that goes to the edges just the feel of it nothing squeaks nothing creaks i think it's impeccable design and that's what i'd always loved about Macs. i mean i really hated the software but when it came to hardware even the iphones i believe nothing comes close um i think the only laptop that comes quite close to this uh, is the hp spectre x360 but it's still a mile ahead uh initial impressions when it comes to uh, laptop functionality I mean you just open the laptop it just lights up like that and no Windows computer has ever come this close I mean it's just phenomenal the keyboard is great uh, typing on it I also believe this is the best keyboard of any laptop I've ever used the laptop that comes a bit close is the Dell XPS 15 uh, in terms of the typing experience I do, however, have a few issues with the keyboard that I'll be discussing in terms of the layout. But in terms of the tracking and the trackpad, it's just, it, it just phenomenal. There's no way to describe it. The battery life on this laptop is great. I charge this laptop once in the morning and it lasts me the whole day and I'm doing quite heavy work. And also uh, the performance is, is great. And I, I'll be showing you some of the uh, benchmarks that I've run and also some of the tests and how it compares to some of the stuff that I have. So uh, without further ado, I mean, let's jump to the five things that I think this laptop is very great at, especially if you're coming from a programming world. So here are the good parts. So number one, performance. So when they said that the M1 was really a leap above the Intel processor that, and what we were used before in Windows, I didn't believe it. So I just did a quick test processing about 500 images from my drone to make a map. Usually with my ThinkPad, it used to take me anywhere between, and it's a Quai 7, anywhere between four to five hours. This one just did it in 40 minutes. And the entire time, the, the laptop was not even hot, not even warm, not silent. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I've also seen significant performance upgrades when it comes to especially machine learning, where doing an inference in about maybe a thousand images, something that used to take me maybe almost two minutes to do uh, with my other laptops. This is just doing it in an instance. It's even hard to track the speed and everything that is happening. Uh, the other thing, and this is less of the MacBook itself, but more about the Apple Echo about the mac os itself it's the ease of installing applications I, I know for mac users out there 
you, you are wondering why, but for me, it's, I mean, you just drag the application and you download it to the applications folder, and that's that. Usually for Windows, there's some apps that are notoriously, you have to go like 10 steps of next, next, accepting a lot of things before you do that. And I think the app installation process for Mac OS is unparalleled for. And same about some small things like AirDrop. And I'm wondering like, hey, Microsoft and other people out there, why? Why can't this be the standard for like literally everything that we do? So the other aspect that I like slightly better, I think for me is the uh, programming aspect. So usually my workflow is that I do zero programming on Windows itself. Like, so from all my Windows computers, I have Windows subsystem for Linux installed. And so this laptop has better Unix workflows. It feels much more natural and like all the, all the features are there for me to use. Uh, and the final thing, of course, is the battery life. So I charge this thing once and I can stay the whole day with it. So the screen is also good. I mean, we get 120 hertz uh, refresh rate. Uh, the colors are awesome. And the new aspect, 16 by 10 aspect ratio just gives me more room to work with. So, so far, so good. I'm liking the workflow. So, and the last thing is, I don't know how to describe this. If you've never used a Mac, it's it just feels so natural to use it's i don't know how to describe it like the ui and just the way the uh, the os is made just feels natural and a lot of time has been put uh, in just how everything is laid out it's much more easier to to work with a mac than a windows and i, I can't believe i'm saying that so what are the bad parts so number one it's <laughs> It takes time for muscle memory for the keyboard. Um, so for Windows, we are used to Control C, Control V, and also the same control works like with bash terminals and everything that you are doing. So when I'm using, for example, programming, uh, command I have to use not Control but Command C, Command V, which is okay. I mean, I've gotten the hang of that. Like it just took me a couple of days. But the problem is that, for example, if I'm using VS Code. So everything that was Windows control now, we shift to command. But if you go to the bash, the terminal, so for example, if you want to kill a program, in Windows it was still like control Z. In this one, it's not command Z, now it's control Z. So sometimes some of the things that you used to do, like you want to toggle between a line to make it a comment, where in Windows it was control uh, back, uh, forward slash. Now, I'd, sometimes I, I always confuse, is it command forward slash or is it control and I have to keep doing that so it, it's a bit hard for me to switch between control and command because it's not command all the things it's just command the application but control takes over now to the things I was used for so there's also this issue of delete and backspace and it's just nitty gritty so in Windows I'm used to you backspace um, from like right to left and you delete from left to right so here is just a delete i'm sure there's like a key combination that i'm too lazy to do look at but so um, naturally i'm finding myself tapping the touch id button but i think that's something that i can that i can work with but apart from that the typing experience is great and i think it's something to get used to the trackpad is great initially i was not used to the whole clicking uh, uh because in most windows laptops you can just touch and I think there's settings to change that in a Mac, but so far so good, I'm liking that. So the second thing that I don't like absolutely about this is multitasking. So Windows is really great at multitasking. So when you're working with multiple uh, tabs open. In this one, so if an app is maximized, I think I have to do the three finger gesture to move from one screen to the other. But if I have like, let's say multiple instances of word running, when I click on the, on the touch, on the toolbar, uh, is it called a toolbar? Yeah, that thing, dock. So I can't see all the instances like the way Windows does. So I like I have to swipe through all the open tabs to find what I'm finding. When I looked online, I saw that there's some paid versions for that, but I'm not paying for software to help me with my Windows management. So the other thing that I'm really frustrating me, and, and I think this, this was the one that was the worst is transferring files from 
any device to my MacBook, specifically an Android phone and also external hard drives. So for example, I have gigabits and gigabits of data on my external hard drive, but I cannot transfer anything from my Mac to the hard drive because it was initially formatted in Windows and I, I don't want to go through the entire process of formatting back again so that it's compatible. And the same happens with the Android phone. Because they don't have AirDrop and I'm not in the, fully in the Apple ecosystem, it really I cannot transfer anything and I have to use like Google Drive and other things and that beats the whole essence of having a computer to transfer the files. The only thing that they've done and I think it's really great is that uh, with the SD card slot uh, you can be able to, to take uh, files and manually now transfer them to the computer. So I think, I think that's one of the ways of Apple just reconciling everybody so that we can use the ecosystem. But airdrops make perfect sense. My wife uses an iPhone and just transferring files makes sense. So I, I don't understand why any other person, Microsoft, Nokia, or Samsung, why can't we have this across the board so that it's ju not just like an Apple thing. Finally, uh, not all applications have been ported over to the Intel uh, M1 and the M2 chips. So we still have a lot of programs that are still running written in the old Intel x86 architecture and using Rosetta to sort of to do the transpiling and it will be great just to see a lot of developers converting majority of the apps uh, to the Apple because we are seeing a significant uh, boost and that's why I was happy like a lot of programs I'm using especially on machine learning like PyTorch and all of that are being already ported over and I think the full potential of the M1 and other Apple silicons will come to light when uh, all the applications have been um, have been converted. So to summarize, quick thoughts. This is the best laptop I've ever used in terms of the build quality, the speaker quality, which I think these are the best speakers of any laptop ever made. Um, the battery life, and I think also the developer experience that you get out of this is unparalleled for. So despite the few things that perhaps I'll get used to over time as I'm slowly uh, using this computer over and over, I think for me this will be my daily driver from now henceforth. Uh, in the next video I think I'll be doing a comparison between the performance of this um, M1 uh, MacBook Pro together against the Core i9 gaming laptop as well as also looking at the performance vis-a-vis -vis, for example I think but just to look at what are the performance gains and where maybe the, still the Windows laptops are doing better than the Mac. But for now I'm happy. I don't think I'll be switching anytime soon and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.